Thanks everyone for joining us on this webinar session for Automathon. It's a pleasure having all of you with us uh, this evening. Uh, and uh, this will be the second webinar uh, session which comes under the umbrella of Automathon India 2020 program, which is by Automation Anywhere and Microsoft. The first session of webinar was organized a couple of weeks back and uh, you guys can find the recorded session of the webinar over the Skillenza platform activity page. Now this evening, so let me just quickly take you all through the agenda of the entire webinar. So I will be giving you all a brief introduction and an overview of the entire Automathon India 2020 program, along with the demo, live demo session of uh, the Skillenza plat, lead the stages, and how can you compete with the other teams who are also taking part in this particular program. And then we have uh, some very well-renowned speakers uh, from uh, Microsoft and Automation Anywhere, who will be giving a session and uh, also live demos of their, uh, of their platform uh, and also the Microsoft Azure uh, services will also be, you know, uh, we will be having a speaker from Microsoft who will be taking you all through. And uh, like I had mentioned, uh, so this webinar is going to be more of an interactive session where you can shoot out any questions at any point of time. Uh, you, there, there's a Q&A option on the top of your screen uh, and uh, feel free to shoot out any questions and we'll make sure that we address all those questions which are being raised, which can be beneficial for all our viewers that have joined us this evening. And now let me quickly uh, take a minute to introduce our uh, speakers. Uh, we have Arjun S. Meda, who's the Senior Developer Evangelist at Automation Any. Uh, we will be having him as one of the speaker. And uh, Arjun, we are very glad to have you with us uh, this evening. Thanks a lot for joining us. And also we have uh, Vivek Sridhar, who's the Senior Developer Product Marketing at Microsoft. And uh, thanks a lot uh, to you as well, Vivek, for taking out time and uh, coming and joining us all this evening to share your knowledge on Microsoft Azure services. And uh, before I invite our first speaker for his session, uh, like I mentioned, I just uh, wanted to give a brief introduction and an overview of the entire Automathon India 2020 program. That is, why exactly are we doing this and what is it in for you and how can you actually come out with flying colors, right? So the whole idea of this Automathon India 2020 program is uh, to bring together all developers who can uh, build automation solutions that either leverages or operates on Microsoft Azure services using the Automation A2019 platform. Now, what do we exactly mean by this is, uh, basically, if you take a look, Automation Anywhere offers an automation platform on which you can you know, build software-based bots or robots, uh, automates the entire business process. Whole idea uh, here is to help you developers build bots that either you know, use uh, Azure cloud services like uh, cognitive services or the app services, so uh, which, which can be used to you know, solve a problem or, uh, or maybe you know, something which can basically operate on the Azure cloud services as well, so that they can perform an operation on uh, Azure cloud, uh, for example, like an IT operation. So that's the entire, uh, you know, the whole idea. We have come forward with this uh, Automathon India 2020 program where you can uh, submit your ideas with uh, innovative solutions and uh, by building uh, extraordinary bots or uh, products uh, throughout this program. Now, uh, before uh, we get into how, uh, what are the perks or what, what exactly is in it for you guys, I wanted to give an overview of the uh, grand hack and the career fair. So at the end of the program, towards the end of the program, we will be having a grand hack and a career fair, which will be uh, organized on uh, March uh, 28th. 2020 in uh, Microsoft Office. And uh, the best part about uh, this entire program is there are exciting cash prizes uh, 
to be uh, you know grabbed. So we have uh, for the Grand Hack and the Career Fair, the top teams or the winning teams will be awarded with uh, 3.5 uh, lakh rupees. So that's that's a great opportunity for you all to you know unleash your potential as well. Now, not everyone who has registered in this particular program will be getting an opportunity to you know take part in this uh, particular uh, Grand Hack. So before the grand hack, we will be having a few set of uh, you know uh, quizzes, and also there's an online hackathon stage where you have to submit your prod uh, project, and we will be going through all the projects which are submitted over our uh, Scalenza platform, based on which we will be shortlisting the top teams who will be invited for this grand hack and career fair, and also the best part uh, for the shortlisted teams uh, among them. The top teams will also be given a uh, travel reimbursement for the uh, Grand Hack and Career Fair for those who are residing outside Bank. Wondering why exactly are we calling this Automathon uh, India 2020 a program in itself, right? So the reason is because we are here to make sure that we not just, you know, uh, bring forward all the developers and uh, ask them to do some submissions uh, of the projects which they've worked on. But we also want to help you nurture your uh, knowledge when it comes to automation and also Microsoft Azure. So with respect to that, we have organized a number of uh, webinars uh, which are lined up. So like I mentioned, the first webinar was a couple of weeks back and uh, the recorded session has also been uploaded over Skillenza platform, where you can go and take a look at what was uh, what was in that particular webinar. Because we had uh, Wa Mukund uh, from Automation Anywhere who gave an introduction about uh, uh, RPA and A2019 platform, and also along with him, we had another session where Abhishek from Microsoft talked about uh, Azure Cognitive Services. Right, so that was our first webinar, and here we are for our second webinar. Similarly, we have uh, 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 another uh, couple of uh, webinars which are lined up in the upcoming weeks, which you can take, uh, you can register for, attend those webinars, and get to learn a lot. Apart from that, also we have uh, meetups uh, which are lined up in uh, various cities across India. That is uh, Bangalore, Hyderabad. Delhi and uh, Pune. So meetups in Delhi, Hyderabad uh, are already uh, done. It was in the previous weeks which we had, and uh, the upcoming meetups are we have we have one meetup on 15th in Pune, and also we have another meetup on 29th Feb in uh, Bangalore. So you can go to the platform and register for those meetups right away as well. Right. And then apart from this, like I mentioned, uh, so we have an online hackathon as well in this uh, Automathon India 2020 program where you have to come up with innovative ideas where you build automation solutions using A2019 platform and Azure services. And post that, apart from the grand hack, we also have uh, cash prizes uh, uh, for, the, uh, for the top teams who who will be competing uh, during the online hackathon. And uh, apart from the online hackathon, we also have uh, quizzes which are lined up over the platform. And uh, these quizzes will also be considered while we are shortlisting the teams for the grand hack. I would like to urge you to you know, go and take up those quizzes which are uh, focused on uh, RPA and uh, Microsoft Azure services. And well, it will also be a great opportunity for you to you know, nurture your knowledge in those uh, specific domains. Now talking about the schedule, so this is what I was talking about uh, this particular program. We are also looking to upskill your hackathon game uh, by, you know, where you can take part in uh, various meetups, uh, online webinars, quizzes, and also there are provided by Automation Anywhere and also Microsoft, which can be used by you. And uh, so like you can see the dates, uh, so we had our first webinar on 23rd Jan and you can find the recorded video over Skillenza platform. Apart from that, uh, we have a number of meetups in Hyderabad. Uh, we had it in Bangalore and we had it in Delhi as well. And talking about the upcoming meetups, we have uh, the meetups on uh, 
15th Feb in Pune and we have another meetup on 29th Feb in Bangalore. And apart from this, uh, like I mentioned, so we have the quizzes uh, over Skilenza platform as well. And uh, quiz one is already live. Uh, the quiz two will be going live on 14th Feb. And uh, then we'll be having the quiz three on 1st of March. Uh, so just to keep you all informed that these three quizzes will be dependent on each other. That is only after you complete quiz one, you will be able to take part in quiz two. And once you complete quiz one and quiz two, then you will be allowed to take part in quiz three. So this is about the program itself. And like I mentioned, there's an online hackathon which is already ongoing over Skelenza platform. So you guys can maybe, I believe uh, some of the teams have already started working on their submissions. And if at all you haven't started it yet, then we would urge you to get started right away so that you are coming out with the best solution. So please make sure that you do your submission uh, so that we will only, we will be allowed to, you know, uh, shortlist your team based on the submission. And uh, we will be announcing the shortlisted teams and the invitations will be rolled out uh, to the uh, teams uh, who will be invited between 12th March to 16th March. And post that, like I talked about the Grand Hack and Career Fair, it will be on 28th March in Bangalore. And also, like I mentioned, I'm going to stress on this point once again, the teams who are shortlisted and who will be traveling from outside Bangalore will be uh, given a travel reimbursement as well. Like I mentioned, we have uh, think cash prizes for the online hackathon and also the grand hack. So for the online hackathon, uh, you, as you can see it over the screen, uh, the prize money for the first uh, winner is uh, 50,000 uh, Indian rupees. And then second prize uh, is 35,000 and the third prize is uh, 15,000 uh, Indian rupees. So this, this would be for the top teams from the online hackathon. And then during the grand hack as well, there will be cash prizes uh, for the winning teams, the top three teams, and uh, the, the the first prize uh, winners will be get will be rewarded with one lakh Indian rupees, and second prize winners seventy five thousand, and third prize winners will be given twenty five thousand uh, Indian rupees. I'll be just uh, giving a quick introduction about Skilenza. Uh, so just like this particular program. Uh, Automaton India 2020 program. We have uh, various professionals who come up uh, over our platform to solve similar challenges, who take part in quizzes and uh, various other online hackathons, just like Automaton India 2020. We help professionals uh, solve uh, challenges and take part in those. And also the organizations, uh, we help them host those challenges and evaluate based on the uh, on the people who are taking part in this particular hackathons. Now, let me just quickly take you all through the Skilenza platform. So when you log on to Skilenza platform, you can simply click on the activities uh, tab. And once you click on the activities tab, you can take a look that there is the featured uh, activity, which is Automaton India 2020. Simply click on it and it will take you to the activity page. Uh, so this is the page where you can get the complete entire uh, overview of the program. So you can find the various tabs which are available here. Just uh, by clicking on those tabs, you can take a look at uh, some of it. Just like, uh, let me just quickly take you to this tab. So the discussion forum is where uh, you, any queries or whenever you want to join a team or if you want some members to join your team, you can just shoot out here and apart from this there are a set of frequently asked questions and also like i mentioned we have uh, really really helpful resources which are provided by automation anywhere and microsoft so you can take a look at these resources page uh, so here's the resources tab uh, where you can just click on the resources tab and once you click you will be able to see all the links which are provided by automation anywhere and microsoft and also uh, automation anywhere has uh, you know put forth a really really good 
blog on how can you create a sentiment analysis bot using Azure Cognitive Services, which will be really helpful while you guys are working on the projects. And the timeline can be found here. And also the webinars, all the webinars which are being organized, uh, which are being held or organized are recorded. And later on, they are uploaded over this particular platform. So you can just click on the webinars tab and go take a look at these uh, webinar recorded videos at any point of time. Now, once you register, you'll be able to see the view stages button. So all you have to do is just click on view stages. And once you are uh, redirected to this page, you will see that all these are the stages which are open right now. So let me just quickly take you through all these one stages from each of these activities basically so the more about you stage is where you have to fill in your details and once you fill in your details you will be uh, given uh, you so i'll just quickly go through it so you have to click on start and once you start the stage you have to fill in all these uh, necessary details which are asked here and once you finish all these you have to click on submit now I haven't filled these details, but once you click, you will be able to, you know, get a, 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 a notification which says that uh, submitted and post that click on end stage. Now this is something I want all of you to please take care of because once you have completely submitted all the, by answering all the questions, you just have to click on finish activity. But in case you haven't answered any of these questions or some of are left blank then you can simply click on return later so for now i'm clicking on return later and i go back to the activity timeline so this will be the activity timeline right so i can again resume my stage since i had clicked on uh, return activity later right but if you click on end stage then you won't be able to see this button here similarly for the team formation stage so this team formation stage, you have to click on start stage. And once you start, so over the team formation stage, uh, you will be able to, you know, send out uh, requests to other teams uh, where you can ask them uh, if you are interested to join their particular team. So I can request any of these uh, teams or if I want to create my own team, I can just click on this particular button and I give a team name and yes, I can create uh, my own team. Apart from that, there's also another option in the team formation stage uh, where you can send out invites to specific uh, people if you want them to join your team. So that can also be done in the team formation stage. And uh, then like you can see the other uh, activities as well. So these are the previous activities and uh, the quiz is live already quiz one. So you can just click on start and uh, make sure you always read these instructions, right? And similarly, you have to answer all these questions one by one. And uh, every time you answer any of the question, you have to click on submit and continue. Once you answer all these questions, similarly click on end stage and uh, return later for now, since I haven't uh, completed all the questions, right? So, so these were the, some of the, uh, uh, stages that I have taken you through and similarly all the other stages for the meetup and uh, for the webinars as well it will be in the similar format where you can uh, you know register for the webinars or the meetups and once you register for them we will be sending out invitations uh, for those particular meetups or webinars whenever you are registering for them. Now, uh, moving on with our first speaker, uh, I'd like uh, to invite uh, Vivek, uh, who's the C Senior Developer Product Marketing at Microsoft. Uh, we are more than happy to have you, Vivek, and uh, over to you. Thank you. So the agenda is to introduce Azure. Um, so as Azure was talking about the hackathon, which is going to happen, and um, for that, Azure Cloud is one of the uh, services you need to use. And I'm going to introduce Azure and how you can host some apps in Azure. And uh, we can take a look at uh, the services, which is essential for building a chatbot. So, and conclusion and question and answers and other things, which is uh, definitely uh, we can go about. And I, I know that uh, there are some questions uh, which has been posted. 
about the Azure credits and other things. I will, I will take a, a stab at uh, where you can get started with the Azure credits. And, uh, and also at the hackathon, the grand hackathon, uh, definitely we will provide the, uh, you know, the Azure credits to build the uh, apps for, uh, for with the RPA. Okay. So uh, even before I start, uh, I just want to introduce myself. So uh, I'm a software developer. I did work at IBM India Software Labs for uh, for around eight years. I was working in DevOps. DevOps was my favorite, uh, and even even today it is my favorite uh, uh, technology or the process or process uh, architecturing. Uh, so I did work with Blackbird and HCL. And I had owned my startup, and then I was in DigitalOcean, and right now I'm working in Microsoft as in, in the developer relations team. So that's about me. So let me deep dive uh, into, everybody have this question, right? So how do I architect my app? And after architecting my app, how do I um, you know, deploy this app in the cloud? So, so th the most important thing is obviously you need to build a local environment. As a developer, I need to have a local environment. Uh, I need to set up my Visual Studio, uh, and Visual Studio Code, and I need to make sure that everything is updated there. I need to have my local uh, environment, and then uh, you can use different services to host app in the cloud. One is obviously uh, the infrastructure as a service, which is a very simple VM, and there are pass layers, uh, which is the platform as a service. So there could be a app service, there could be uh, you know, uh, you know the container service or a Kubernetes service. Uh, I've just divided that pass layer also into a serverless because it is very specific to, you know, uh, the next session which is happening, uh, which is which is trying to build a chatbot where you're going to use uh, some of the event runs or the, some of the web APIs uh, to run some of the uh, services. So uh, I'll go through one by one. Uh, I'll try to demo as much as possible on the platform so that you can uh, learn uh, the deployment of these apps uh, in cloud. So cloud is simplified, uh, whatever uh, you use, either it is infrastructure as a service or platform as a service or, uh, or the serverless, the ultimately you're using compute storage and network, even in your local environment, you're using these three uh, simple model, right? You have a compute, you have a storage, you have a network. So this is the basic of any cloud. And even if uh, you know you are uh, deploying it in infrastructure as a service or a pass layer or in a serverless or in your local environment. From Azure's you know perspective, right? Uh, that I mean, I've divided this into two different things. One is obviously there is a development environment, which is your local environment which has IDE support and you know, the Visual Studio code you have. And there are a lot of plugins we need to install on that. And there is an integration with DevOps. There is a you know, where you can monitor logs, you can see the logs, you know, you can visualize and debug some of the things. And from the platform perspective, there are a bunch of services which you can use, uh, which could be uh, functions, which is, which is a simple you know, executable code, which is triggered over an event. Okay, and there is a logic apps where you can design the flow and orchestrate the processes. And there are event grids, you know, where you can manage the events and you can trigger some of these events. And of course, there is a bunch of databases and storage uh, solutions. And there is security, uh, you know, network securities in, in with respect to different services talking to each other. And there's IoT analytics and intelligent systems. So it's, it's from the platform perspective. And from the development environment perspective, we have Visual Studio Code with everything installed on top of it. So you need to integrate both uh, when you're, when you're uh, deploying an application. Uh, as a developer, you're going to use both the things. Uh, you're going to use the local environment from the developer perspective, and also you, can, you will be using the platform, uh, which is from the Azure uh, Cloud perspective, okay? I'll show you a demo, but when you want to start something on Azure or with anything with Microsoft, docs.com is, is the starting point. 
So if you go to the docs.com, you will find all the help you need. So this is exactly from the, uh, you know, uh, from your hackathon perspective, when you're building something, this is where you have to go and look for answers. Uh, so just a, a overview of docs.com, it's a, it's an open source project. Um, you can definitely improve the uh, documentation. Uh, of course, in this hackathon, you might find so many documentations might not be updated or something is not updated or you need to write a new documentation. So you can do a pull request and become an open source contributor to our docs.com. Okay. So docs.com, no, docs, so docs.microsoft.com um, slash Azure will give you a list of uh, services and you can go into each of these services and look into the uh, services and uh, help which you need from the documentation perspective. And you can take care. Uh, there are a lot of quick starts, there are a lot of tutorials and there is a uh, sample course which is available for all of these services. So you can actually go in and uh, do a bunch of things out there. So uh, just an example, um, if you want to try it out, just go to docs.com and find a serverless function documentation and try choosing your language specific thing and you will be able to uh, see how effective docs.com is for uh, your hackathon or for building any applications in the cloud. Okay. So let me introduce uh, portal. Um, so here is where just go for a Google and try um, free uh, Azure free trial and you'll, you'll land up in this page and there is 12 months free trial service available. You know, if, if before you come into the grand hack, uh, you can learn about Azure services, you can build those Azure services and all, all the, uh, you know, all the services we have, you can use it through this 12 months free trial. And this is what we offer basically uh, all popular services available to you and some credits is available for 30 days and we have 25 plus services which is already free for you so if you go in depth you will, you will be able to find you can see what all services are available for you and you can also see the uh, 20 21 services which is all, always free so if you see that function is free for some of the requests you can use. So you can definitely start using it right away. Okay, so this is this is the you know, portal and this is home and this is called dashboard. Here you can actually edit the dashboard and add more uh, details into this dashboard. So there is a dashboard and you can you know, add new dashboard and you can uh, you know, edit this whole thing. But the most important thing is the resources and resource groups. Everything in Azure is a resource. Uh, so basically, if you try to create a resource, this is a infrastructure as a service. So if I'm uh, creating a Ubuntu server, so I just have to click on this, find a resource and uh, click on the resource which you want to create. And it gets created under a resource group. So basically you are grouping a subscription under a subscription is nothing but, you know, uh, it's a building method. And you can learn about that uh, in the few links which I will provide by the end of this webinar. Uh, subscription uh, is the high level, and after that, there comes the uh, resource group. So, for each subscription, there is a resource group. Under the resource group, there is a resources. So, it's basically logically, uh, you know, bifurcating your services and making sure you can group these services into different um, resources, resource groups. Okay, so basically, let's create a new one. So, uh, auto test. So, basically, we'll create a new resource group, and this is the virtual machine name. You can give any name here, and and then you can give regions where you want to create. And I usually choose North Central because most of the services are available there. That is for the demo purpose, but you can definitely choose India whenever. Uh, in, you know, whenever you are building some application for production oriented. And uh, obviously there are a lot of things where you can do which image to choose and you know, size and here is where uh, you can play around with the 
uh, costing. So you just have to click on the size and you can uh, you know, uh, filter it out and you know, ascending order and descending order and choose the services which you want to choose. So that is uh, from the creating a virtual machine perspective. There are a lot of other things which you need to provide. That is the password, the inbound and outbound services. And then if you see this, there is a disk, there is networking, which you need, which you need to add, uh, which is the virtual network, which we are going to create. And then there is management layer, and then there is advanced layer, uh, tags and a and lot of uh, other things. And then it gets reviewed and then it gets created. So you can provide all these details and get started with the portal. So once you create it, uh, all resources uh, which you create will be under the all resources and you can uh, take a look at all the resources which is there and it is grouped by resource group and you will see all this uh, when I demo the pass layer um, and resource groups will be available here. I've already created some of the resource groups and it is already here. So it's, it's uh, pretty simple. So you just need to um, just go and click on the create a resource and find the resource you want to create and want and just click on that resource and get started. Okay, so that's the simple and you can find uh, the cloud shell here. So when you click on this cloud shell, uh, you can, it will give you uh, storage with storage. There is a you know, uh, CLI where you can perform various activities. So you can just create a storage and with your subscription and start with the CLI. So I'll show this up when I do the app service uh, demo, but this is what about the dashboard. Let me go back to my slide. So let me show you before I go into the slides, let us create an app service. So the first part, I showed you how to do the infrastructure as a service. Now we will see how to build a pass layer, which is an app service. So I'll just click on the web server app and you definitely you can create a new uh, resource. So this, the story is the same. It, it is subscription, resource group and resources. So everything in Azure is a resource. So you'll just create a resource. Uh, so the resource name or uh, resource group name is uh, we'll name it as auto test. We didn't create last time. We just created now and we'll name the app service as auto 001. Okay. So then we can publish a Docker container or the code. I'll, I'll say I'll publish through Docker container and then you can choose the operating system you want to publish this particular app and then choose the uh, required uh, region. So let me take central US and you can choose the uh, Linux plan or create a new one. Uh, well, I'll, I'll just use the one which is there and I'll change the SKU. SKU is nothing but the spec. So I'll change it to dev test. So which is F1 uh, or I can even choose the production one, but let us go here um, include so this basically it's a free one and it is not always up. So bear with me. So we have one and then apply. And this is next is go to the Docker and you can either choose a single container or you can do a Docker Composer. Uh, you can choose single container and image source can be anything. So uh, what I'm doing is at the end of this session, I'll give you a link uh, where you can, you can go and explore all these uh, what are these uh, services which I'm talking about? There's a Docker Hub, there is a private registry which you can host, or you can also use Azure Container Registry. The, so all these images which you create in Docker, you can either host it on all of these, uh, you know, all of these services, and use any of these services. So I'm just taking a quick start, but it is available Python Hello World. So I'm just, uh, you know, images. It's a, it's a sample image and then there is a monitoring if you want to monitor it. Uh, it's, it's not required from the uh, hackathon perspective, but if it is a production, uh, you want to monitor it, you have to monitor it. So going back, 
to review and validation if you see it will validate so if validation fails uh, take a look at it and try and resolve it if validation is fine there is no issues you can create it so i have selected all the things all i need to do is to create it so it will get created now so it will take some time to get it deployed and bring up the service by the time it does um, let me go back to the slide and this is where you can learn all the okay this is where you can learn the um, app service so this is the link you take up this link and go and learn uh, how to build it how to deploy through a cli how to deploy it through uh, visual studio and everything it's available through this link okay so let it deploy it takes uh, it takes uh, five minutes um, by the time it deploys we'll we take a look at some of the services like serverless so this is very important from the uh, chatbot perspective from the rpa perspective so if you are building something with rpa uh, on any cloud uh, you need to understand the serverless uh, so the reason is uh, i don't want to go in depth of why serverless what it is and uh, i know there are questions around it i'll give you a, a wonderful book where you can go and read about it but the important thing here is serverless is is something which will run a simple piece of code with a with an event driven strategy right so if i have to give you an example uh, we all use this site right to you know order a lot of uh, books let me take it as books uh, we order only books um there are cards uh, there are uh, various other small services which is available and once you buy this book there are a lot of things happens at the back end so for example uh, you go and check out uh, and say i'm checking out that book uh, there is there is a database storage which is there and it gets triggered you know the entry once you do the entry um, you can have a trigger to calculate the tax or uh, there could be a simple service which is which is azure function and after calculating the tax there is a payment uh, a payment method gets enabled and you you know the user can pay even that gets triggered once that is done well, the azure function starts working with fulfillment so basically you are actually doing the actual back end work where the the book is being uh, you know packed and delivered to the user and there is a tracking which gets triggered so for all these small efforts there is there is a simple piece of code which you want to trigger only when checkout happens or only when when the event happens so that is where uh, the serverless is is more effective and that is where the serverless uh, comes into picture and 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 the most important thing about the chatbot which is going to be explained in the next session is that in a, in a chatbot there is a lot of events get triggered and for those event event to be handled um, the functions which you create and deploy uh, are the most essential things uh, which will provide information back to the chatbot uh, through these services and obviously in between you can also use uh, the cognitive services which was explained in last webinar where the cognitive services provide information back to the chatbot by using some of the Azure functions in between so it's an architecture architecture and you need to uh, think about how to architect it and uh, deploy the right product to solve uh, those problems uh, which will be in the hackathon basically so let me see go back to let me let me give you the book as well before i go and show you the whole demo so this is a book uh, basically if you want to learn uh, about serverless there is a serverless cookbook which is available you just have to go to this book and read through it as detailed out how to build stuff on um, you know on functions and using serverless and why and which stages you need to use serverless etc so it's a wonderful book so take a look at it so let me go back and see how that is being deployed and i'm on a f1 free plan so it's not always up it's it's in the container world it's called three container world um uh, hot warm and cold containers as of now it's in the cold container state 
and we'll have to wait for it to become a hot, come into the hot container state. So by the time it happens, let me show you the serverless thing. So uh, to get started with serverless, uh, even before I go deep dive into that, you know, serverless, oops, I can't see. Okay. So I just want to show you how you can trigger stuff. So there are quite a different ways to trigger. I showed you one of the trigger, which was like Azure Cosmos DB in my slide, right? There is checkout happening and there is a event which is coming into Azure Cosmos DB and you can do the trigger. But the triggers can be various things. One, it could be an HTTP trigger. It could be a timer triggers. It could be a block storage trigger. Block storage is nothing but a storage, uh, which is an unlimited storage where you know you can host different objects there and access these objects via internet it will provide you an url and you can use those uh, you know the objects through those urls so there is a queue storage that is through event grid you know even grid if there is an event grid which is happening through subscriptions and other things so you need to learn all these things if you want to master the function and uh, enable it uh, how you want to trigger these uh, services uh, but the most commonly used is HTTP one. Uh, there is Azure Cosmos DB and Blob storages are used. Uh, let me go back and see if this has come up. No, this is still taking time. So, um, so this, so when you want to get started with uh, serverless, the most important thing is the Visual Studio, and Visual Studio has lots of plugins, and you need to make sure that you have these plugins installed, and you can. Um, you know, use these plugins whenever you want, you're building something. Uh, the most, uh, or especially for doing something with related to serverless in Python, uh, you install the Python uh, plugin and you install the uh, Azure uh, function plugin. And, and also you need to install something called as, uh, something called as Azure, function core tools, which is a CLI tool uh, where you can uh, perform some of the actions which is required. Um, you, can, you can see that it has a lot of help. Uh, if you just type function, you can see those uh, you know, help which is available for you to take a look at it. Okay, so this is, this is related to the installation you want, you have to do from the three perspective, Azure core functions, um, Azure, function core tools, and then you need to do Azure functions and, and you need to do Python, okay? You need to install these you know, plugins for you to get started with the uh, serverless. So, so this is how you can deploy a simple service, but the way I have deployed is just a simple container. So what you can do is you can just package your application into a containers or you know, into a com Docker Composer and just deploy it onto the app service. And you can see, you know, through an API, you can access it. So it's a simple way to deploy an application and you can connect this application back to the uh, RPA tool, which is there uh, from the uh, you know, Automation Anywhere tool. And when you're building a chatbot, you can obviously connect through this uh, APIs. So uh, coming back to uh, the serverless, uh, this is the Visual Studio. I have installed all the uh, plugins which is required from, uh, from getting the serverless job done. I have already added a folder uh, to my functions and I just need to create a new one. So I'll just say create new one from here. I'll say serverless and then I'll, it will ask me which kind of a trigger you want to do. Uh, as you know, there are a lot of triggers I did talk about in my slide was Azure Cosmos DB trigger, but I'll take a look at uh, the HTTP trigger and you just need to name it. So let's say test 001 and I press enter and then anonymous. So it's basically authorization, like who can run this particular function. So um, I've given it to everyone and the function is already available now here. So you can copy the function and copy the URL here. You can copy it here. This is a function code which is there. And you can go back and 
try and run that URL. No, it's not working, right? It, it will not work because we are not running it. So what we will do, we will go back to the my terminal. And in that terminal, I have created the new function called wiki test through my Visual Studio. I can just go here and run the function test. So start. Double is it's here. I should have actually run it through this. Oops. Mm, I can do it from another port. NG. Okay. Let us do it from another port. It is here. Link is ready. I should have done it from the did it from the wrong folder. So here is the function. You can see that it is running. So this is this is what it is running. It is asking me to provide the data. So it works. Yes, it works. So this API is working fine, and this is how you can deploy it in your local host. So it means that I am currently working on my local environment. Everything is set on my local environment. Nothing is available on the uh, Azure function. So right now we want to deploy this. So we will, what we will do is we'll click on this and we'll say we want to deploy this and create a new function app and enter a global name for it. So we can a name one two. And you can choose uh, which um, you know, Python you want to use, Python version, and you can choose where you want to run it. So you can, let's, Southeast Asia. Okay. So now it starts creating my apps in, in, in the um, Azure portal. And this app will now get deployed into the Azure portal. And you can see that it's creating storage account and it is creating all the uh, packages and deploying the code into the uh, Azure function app uh, on my uh, Azure service. Uh, currently it was in my local, local project. Now I'm pushing it to the Azure Visual Studio uh, subscription. So I'm just waiting it to get deployed. It will take some two minutes. It is already in the three or the four has been done. It's creating a new function app. So okay. It's got deployed, okay? But the way you can see is, you can see a lot of things being available here. You can see application settings, you can see the deployments, the deployments, you can see proxies and various things which is there. You can find that in the docs, what are these things, which, which what does it mean? But the most important thing is the deployment, uh, where you can actually deploy through the GitHub repository. You can connect to your GitHub repository and it will get deployed. So you can automatically set. When you push something to your branch, uh, which is set, it gets deployed to this function. Okay, so let me go back and there is a URL which is available here. You can copy the function URL and go and so the same message you will get it. So this is hosted on your website now. You, this is an API for you now. So all you need to do is the same method 
So you can see that there is a message which is coming here. So this is the API which you can do. So all you need to do is it's pretty easy. You just need to go and you know, you know, you have your uh, projects here. You just need to edit this function and you need to define the code in this and then you just need to go to the Azure and then deploy it and redeploy it. If you want to deploy it, you can redeploy it. Um, or else you can deploy it through the connector. Okay, so this is as simple. Uh, it's a very simple uh, method. So um, this is a link for the serverless cookbook where you can uh, go back and do a lot of stuff. So I did cover the um, you know the, the given the time infrastructure as a service like how we can create a virtual box. And then, then there is an app service, and then uh, I did cover the serverless, how you can deploy something in, in serverless. Uh, most of these things is available or with the code, with everything on GitHub. So uh, this is the link. You can go to this link and you can find all the code which, which is there and deploy each one of these. Um, the app service, the serverless, the, um, the infrastructure and service, the virtual, virtual box, and also Azure DevOps and everything. So you can just take a look at this link and do uh, much more uh, and learn much more stuff. And if you want to get started with Azure fundamentals, like learning about everything, like the basics of Azure, from the dashboards, the pricing models, the, the way it is structured, the resource group and the resources, and what all services you can find everything is available in this link so you can take a look at it um, and this is azure challenges so i just want to spend some time here um, so basically i put down uh, some of the challenges so if you want to learn azure and learn all these uh, building all these things in productions and how to do it how to build a containers and everything i already put out some resource links and some challenges where you can go through each of these challenges and try to solve these challenges. Um, I've given sample codes and you know, how to dockerize it. You can dockerize it and then deploy it and see how to do it. So there are a lot of sample codes available. And for serverless, I have given defined uh, some of these challenges and for AI and ML as well. So there is uh, certain challenges which is already available. So you can take a look at it. So this is just a link uh, for a containers and orchestration. If you want to learn container and orchestration, you can go to these links and learn about a uh, lot of stuff. Um, it is a wonderful book, especially the second link. It is a it's a book on uh, Dockerization and why Docker, how to do, how to build something on Docker, Docker commands. Everything is available out there. So, thank you. Thanks a lot for that uh, wonderful session. Uh, it was indeed very educational where we got to know a lot of things about uh, the various Azure services. And uh, we do have questions, but uh, we will be taking in the questions towards the end. And uh, right now I'd uh, like to call upon uh, the next speaker uh, that we have. So we have uh, Arjun S. Meda, who's the senior developer evangelist uh, from Automation Anywhere. And uh, he will be taking all our viewers uh, through a 2019 platform. Thanks a lot for joining us, Arjun, this evening. And uh, with that, I hand over the platform to you. Thank you. Okay, thank you. So hi, friends. Uh, good evening, all. To just uh, introduce uh, myself, I am Arjun S. Meda. I'm a senior developer evangelist with Automation Anywhere. And uh, I welcome you all to this uh, webinar. And uh, good to know that you are all participating in this Automathon uh, India 2020. I'll quickly take you through the agenda of what I'm going to cover. First, I'll show you about the A2019 setup. What is the URL and how do you get started with it? And then uh, we will quickly build a Hello World bot. And I'll show you a couple of examples on uh, various features which you can use in A2019 platform. The first demo will look around uh, Excel, loopings, and also using Outlook to send out emails. In the second demo, 
we will look at a recorder option on how you can interact with objects in various websites and web application and log the data to a CSV file. And after that, we will look at the extensibility features of our platform. That is, how can you interact with a DLL? How can you write and call a Python code? And at the end, we will also look at integration with API services, where you will understand more about how would you work with A2019 platform and the Azure services. First, once you log in to the community edition of the A2019 platform, I'm currently at the home screen. Here, there are a couple of, uh, on the left side is the ribbon which will show you, I'm currently at the home screen and then you have a dashboard activity. The activity shows across what are the current bots which you are running. And then the bots section will show you the list of bots which you have built. And uh, if you want to use secure credentials and uh, save it in the credential vault. This is what uh, you can use the credential vault again. And on the my devices, it will show you your device. So for example, I am currently connected. And as you know, this entire A2019 platform is totally running on the cloud. That means whatever bots you are going to build, it is all built within the browser itself. And then if you want to execute it in your own machine, that's when you will have to connect it to your local machine using a bot agent. And once it is connected to your local machine, you will see this green tick symbol with the text as connected so that uh, you'll be able to run the bot. And on the top right is where you will see your account details. And to the left of it is the status of the device connection. For example, Currently, my local bot agent is connected to my device and that's why it is uh, showing ready to run bots. If there is a challenge, then it will show you that you need to install the bot agent and it will also guide you through the wizard to install the same. And uh, device login credentials is my local device credentials which I am passing it to the cloud so that it will be able to execute my bots on my local machine. So now let's quickly go to the bots. Uh, I'll go to the home page to get started with a hello world bot. I will click on create a bot, give it a name. You can write the description and it's actually optional. If you want to select a different folder structure, you can do that. I'll leave this as default. And on the top right corner, you can click on create and edit. And now if you need a little more space for you to work on, you can actually minimize this ribbon on the left side so that uh, you get a little more real estate on the left side is where is the actions panel. And you can see all the commands which are available in 828-2019 for you to work with. For example, if you want to work with a browser, so you just expand the command and look at what are the different commands which are available under browser. Similarly, if you want to work with CSV or text files, here there are options to open, read and close. Similarly, you can look at all the available commands for you. And then there is a trigger section. So trigger section is where you will define when do you want the bot to be triggered? And the third section is variables. Here, you can define different type of variables and accordingly you can use them in your bots. For example, I'll just click on create variable and then now you can write a name for the bot. And if it's only going to be a constant value and if you want to pass the values between two bots which you are writing, that's when you're going to use this, uh, whether you are going to use this variable as an input or you're going to pass this variable as an output to the other bot. Next one is the type of variables which you can create. Click on the drop down here. You can see that uh, there are good number of variables which are available for you. So you can select uh, the right variable for your particular bot. We'll look at uh, examples when we are building the bots. Now, going back to the action section, 
as always just to build a hello world bot all i have to look is message box which i'm going to just type it here or you can also scroll down here it's all in alphabetical order so message box is here i'll you can either double click on this or you can drag and drop as well and then if you don't want this like as you can see because i double clicked once and then dragged and dropped it once here you can see the two message boxes if you don't want one click on these three dots and you can click on delete action and coming back to this message box on the right side you will see the properties this is the title for the message box and you can also define what is the message you want to put out so in this context i'm just going to write hello world click on apply click on save and then click on run so as you can see it is giving it gave me an option deploying to my computer that means whatever bot the simplest ones i have built it's currently on the cloud and now it is going to be pushed out to my local system and it gets executed from my local system as you can see here this is how you can just get started with the hello world bot next we will look at a couple of more uh, demos for that because it's a little more exhaustive bots i don't want to type and take a lot of time instead i would show you the bots which i have built and also explain you through the steps which will be easy for you to understand one is called a dll test so what we are going to do is like we will call a dll and then we can pass the data to it and also get the output from the dlls for that on the left side you can just type a dll here as you can see it uh, works with c sharp dlls and it has the options like open close and run function and in this dll so now i have added a dll to this particular bot using the option dll under that the command called open so on the right side i've just given the file path to the dll which i currently have and the next command which i'm using is dll run function so for the properties on the right side this is the session name so what is the session name doing is like when you use the dll command by default it gives a name called default itself however you can change this name and in the next command whenever you are using the function and then you are trying to connect to the previous command which you have used so that's where the session names comes into picture so that the bot understands which session name i am trying to work with accordingly it will be able to connect it to the previous commands so session name because i have used it default in the open command i am going to use the same session name default enter the namespace so this is all uh, the data which you would need from the dll which you are using and again enter the class name in my case visible bot methods is the name of the class and then under that i have a function called say hi to and then i also want to pass the parameter so in this case i am passing a parameter called my name dict which i'll also show you here on the left bottom i am clicking on variables and you can see that i have created a variable called my name dict so i'll just uh, click on edit variable so that i can show you here i am using a dictionary variable and then the type is dictionary and the subtype is string here i have defined a key value pair in the key i have given the data point as name and then the value is arjun so what this bot is going to do is just taking this data from the variable my name dict in this case the value for the key name is arjun so it is going to take the value arjun and then it will add hi arjun so all it is going to do is just add hi to the data i'm passing it through here and then i'm capturing the output to a variable which is a default variable called prompt assignment which is of the type string 
You can also define any other string variables and you can use it here. Once I am uh, done with running this function, I'm just going to close the DLL. Again, uh, the session name has to match so that the bot understands uh, which DLL you are trying to close. And after that, I'm going to use a command called message box. And in this message box, earlier in the DLL run function, I had stored the output of the DLL in a default variable called prompt assignment. So that's what I'm using it here. So that the data, which is the output from the DLL is displayed in the message box. Once you're done with this, click on run. It is going to uh, quickly deploy the bot to your local system. And then you can see like hi there is the string which was added from the DLL in this case. So Arjun was the data which was passed through the variable my name dict in this bot. Also talking about the different views your uh, A2019 has, this particular view which we are looking at is called a flow view, which is kind of like a flow chart. However, if you like, there is another option called a list where it looks like the developer view. And again, if you want to look at both the flow and the list views, you can click on dual and then it shows both the views in, at the, in the same screen. Okay, we are done with this demo. So I'll click on close. And now it takes me back to the my bots section. Now, next I'll show you one more bot. Here, let me help you with the use case first and then we will, I'll show you how the bot runs. I have this sample demo website in which I have a bunch of data in a HTML table. And then I want to extract all the data from this website and then log this data into a CSV file and save it on my desktop. And I'll show you how this can be done in A2019. Uh, the menu bar is, uh, let me go here. So now the first command here I'm going to use is browser. Again, the way you would uh, look for it is I would just type browser and then launch website. So that's the command which I've used here. Browser launch website on the right side. I have defined the URL which I want the bot to launch and then I'm selecting I want the bot to run this particular website to be launched in Internet Explorer browser. However, there are other browsers which are also supported. I'll go with Internet Explorer in this context. Next, I'm going to use a command called recorder. So recorder, what it does is like, it will capture the data from the website. Again, go to the commands actions section. And uh, this is the command which I've used. Recorder, you have to identify the window title and uh, you're going to run this on the Internet Explorer and then capture the entire table which you, from which you want to extract the data from. And then once you uh, identify this entire table, it will capture all the properties which are required for the bot to capture the data from the site. And next is the action section. So here I want to get the table from the website. So that's why you can see all the different properties which are available to interact with the particular website. In this case, I will go with the option called get table. Once the data is all captured, now I want to store it in a variable and that I'm going to store it in a variable called customers table. And this variable is of the type table. For this, let's go to the variable section and look at our, as you can see, customers table. I'll click on these three dots, click on edit variable. And this is of the type table.
once I have the data captured into a variable, I'm going to write it into a file. Here, the input is the customer's table variable, which has all the data. And then I'm going to enter the name of the file where I want to store this. Here, as you can see in my desktop, I want to store it as customers table dot CSV. And check this checkbox saying create files or folders if it does not exist. You can either choose to append to the existing file or you can also choose to overwrite your existing file. And because it's going to be a CSV file, you can define the row delimiter, the column delimiter and the encoding. And once that is done, I'm just going to close my browser using the option window close. For that, you can go to the actions section, type window, select this option. Here, the close command is available. So that's what I'm using here. And here I'm specifying the ti title of the window and the executable that is uh, Internet Explorer in this case to close the browser. So let me uh, run this bot it's again going to deploy it to the local system the internet explorer will be launched and then the data would be captured and stored it on the local system on the desktop click on close i'll minimize this and this is the table which just got created so as you can see the data from the website is all uh, captured into this CSV file. Now I go back uh, to the my bots section. Next, uh, we will look at a Python sample. So for this, Python bots to work, you need to have Python installed in your system. And here it's a simple use case again, where I'm just capturing the data from the user and then using Python, whatever we did with uh, DLL, like where we just added hi there to the name which I am passing in. Now I'm trying to do that with the Python. For that, first I want to capture the value from the user. For that, I'll use a command called prompt again. On the left side, in the actions section, if you type prompt, you will have options. What are you looking for? Whether you want the user to select a file, a folder, a value, or a S or a no option. In this bot, I'm going to select an option called for value. On the right side, you can see that uh, it is giving me an option. What is the window caption? I want to uh, have it something like enter your name and the message, please enter your name. And whatever data the user is going to enter, it is going to be captured in a string variable. And here I'm just using the default variable that is called prompt assignment. Next, we will look at how do we integrate Python. So look for the package called Python in the actions section. Here there are four commands, open, close, execute function, and execute script. First, I'll use the command called Python script open. Again, similar to how we discussed about the session name, it's important to uh, maintain a same session name in all the commands you use. So I'll use it, I'll leave it as default. And when you're calling the Python scripts, you can either import an entire file or you can also write the entire Python code here in the inline scripting section. So for example, uh, I am going to just uh, write it inline here. As you can see, this is just a simple function where whatever string it is sent to the Python, it is going to add the string called hello and it will output the string. And then select the Python runtime version, whether whatever you have installed, if it's two or three, it supports both. So I'm selecting three. And the next command which I will use is the Python script execute function. On the right side for the commands, I use the same session name that is default. 
and the name of the function to be executed. So we have seen that in the previous open command, we have used a na function name called print me and then I'm passing the argument. The argument, the data which I've captured from the user is stored in a variable called prompt assignment and that's the value which I'm passing it to the Python script and then the output I'm capturing in a variable called Python output. That's again a string variable. On the left side, let me just go to the variable section. And as you can see here, there is a prompt assignment and Python output. If I edit this variable, you can see that it is of the type string. And once the data is captured, I will just use a message box in which I have defined the variable called Python output, which will have the data which is passed out from the Python function. And once you have this message box displayed, you can uh, use the command called close so that uh, the session is closed. Let me quickly run, uh, click on run. So now I'll just add my name here, Arjun. Click on OK. Now you can see that the data, the output from the Python was captured and then it's displayed to you in a message box. So this is how you can use uh, Python scripts in A2019. You can do both calling the entire Python files or you can also write the Python code in the inline scripting section, which I've showed you. In this example, we have looked at passing only one argument to the function. Next, we will look at a demo where we can pass two functions, I mean, uh, two arguments to the Python function. For that, I'll just uh, take a simple example again, where I'm going to send two values to the bot, and then the Python code will just add those numbers and give me the output. For that, on the left side bottom, I'm clicking on the variable section. I'll show you that uh, we are using a variable called input for code and it is of the type list so that you can store multiple values within one variable and the subtype for this variable is number. And as you can see, I am passing two values here. The first value is three and the second value is five. So the Python code is just going to add these two numbers and then it will display eight as the output, which I'm going to capture it back and display it in a message box. So the same steps again, the first step is to, because I'm not capturing the values from the user, just in this example, I am not using that prompt value. However, you can do the same, the way I've shown it to you in the previous bot. Here again, Python script, open command, on the right side, I'm giving the session name as default. And this is where I'm, I've just written a simple code to add the two numbers. And these two numbers are passed from the list variable. And next is execute function. And as you can see, the name of the function is S here. So in the execute function, I'm giving the name of the function name as yes. And the arguments to the function is input for code, which is a list. So this has the values three and five, which it is going to pass to the Python. And then whatever value is being written from the Python function, that will be stored in the default variable called Python assignment, which is of the type string. I can also define uh, any other user defined variables and pass it as well. For now, I'm just using this default prompt assignment. And then use a message box to display the value which we have gotten back from the Python script. And before you complete the bot, just close the same se session uh, which you have used to open the Python script. Now I'll click on run. So now, as you can see here, two values were passed, that is three and five. 
and then the bot was able to uh, add these two numbers and share the output back. Click on close. So now uh, this is how you can you uh, pass multi arguments to your Python function. Next, uh, I would like to show you on the API side where we work with the Azure Cognitive Services. Give me just a second while I pull up that bot. So here uh, in this particular bot, it's called a sentiment analysis bot. So what I'm going to do is like call the cognitive, so Azure Cognitive Services to which I'm going to pass the data, pass some text to it and get the sentiment back from the service. For example, I have this text called, I am happy. So in this case, this is a positive sentiment. So the response is like between zero and one, if it is a positive sentiment, it gets closer to the value one. And if it is on the negative side, that's when it is going to give me a value which is closer to zero. So in this case, I'm expecting a value more than like 95%. And if I use some text, something like this, website is down, I cannot access my reports from last two days. This is really frustrating. And I may have to change the service provider if this is not resolved today. So that means this is a negative sentiment. So that's why the output is going to be close to zero because the value is uh, between zero and one, one being the negative, sorry, zero being the on the negative side and one being on the positive side. Now let's look at how this bot can be built. Again, uh, we can call uh, any REST APIs. So as you can see here under REST web services command, you have these methods called delete, get, patch, post, and put. So for, for this example, I'm going to use the post method. I'll show you the configurations, what I have done uh, to call the API from the A2019 to the Azure Cognitive Services. On the right side, first one is the URI, which I have got it, which I have set it up from the, on the Azure platform. So this is the, URI which you have to use and then in the authentication mode I'm not going to uh, use the user ID and password instead I'm going to use the API key so that's why I've selected authentication mode as no authentication here however uh, here in the header I am passing the subscription key so as you can see here let me so in the name as you can see I am uh, I have the key as the subscription key and then the value is what I have received from the Azure my, from my Azure account and then again content type whatever I'm passing it is all in the JSON format and in the content I'm passing first I'm just passing this text called website is done which I showed you earlier and once I get the response from here I am passing it to a variable called output, which is a dictionary of strings. Let me show you how this variable is constructed. Click on variables and then output. I'll click on edit variable. As you can see here, this is a dictionary. The type is dictionary and the subtype is a string. Click on close. And then now from this dictionary, I again, get the value from the body. So for that, go to the actions section, type dictionary, and again, you can see there are different methods for you to use, assign, get, put, remove, and size. 
here I'm get, using the method called get and you can see this the input is output from the previous web services command which I've used in that I'm looking for the key called body so that means the entire text from the body will be captured and that will be passed to the variable called prompt assignment which is a default once I have that I'll just display the entire message in prompt assignment variable which was stored in the previous command dictionary get and now whatever data I have captured that I want to pass it on to the Python to process a little more when I run the function you will understand what the Python is doing in this case again for this I'll use the Python script open command write the Python session name which is default here I have a function called read from JSON and what I'm doing is like I'm just capturing the key value pairs and I want to see I am going to get a huge response from that I want to just capture two data parameters first one is ID and the score the score is what which will be a value between the zero and one and then I want to round it off just for two two decimals so that's what uh, the Python is doing here and execute function I'm just giving the read from JSON as the excuse me function name I'm passing the argument which is the output from the previous uh, rest web API services and then again from this the Python is going to give me a response and that will be stored in a variable called output from Python I'll also show that variable click on variables output from Python edit variable as you can see this is of the type string and once you get the response back you can just uh, push it to a message box so as you can see here this is the output from Python variable and uh, before you complete the bot just close the uh, Python script session which you have opened earlier now let me uh, click on run now as you can see here the first message box is the output which I am getting it from the web service API so you can see that ID is 1 and then the score is 0 0.06 because it is negative uh, sentiment so now from here I just want to extract this ID and the score value so that means it will first show 1 and then the score will be 0 0.06 only because uh, in the Python function I have uh, defined it in a way that it will round it off to just two decimals so I'll just close this message box next you can see that the ID value was captured as 1 and then the score was displayed as 0 0.06 so this is how the bot can connect with different api services and also pass the output to the python and then process get that data processed in python script and get it back to your bot so this is how you can build end-to-end -end use cases of building using the own commands which are inbuilt to the platform also these are extensible features where you can connect it with Azure services or you can also write your Python script to get the data processing completed so uh, that's all regarding the demos uh, from my side if there are any questions I am happy to take I also want to show you uh, the docs portal so the docs.automationanywhere.com is the portal where you can get information about a 2019 if you scroll down click on build section and then on the left side getting started you can just click on enterprise a 2019.x once you go here there are uh, all the simple from the simplest bots how do you work with hello world with using different desktop applications and uh, how to work with Python how to work with rest web service actions are all provided here for your reference uh, that's all Azar. back to you uh, if there are any questions
Thanks a lot, uh, Arjun, for that uh, wonderful uh, demo and uh, a, a really great session. So I just uh, came across one question by our viewers, uh, which I would like to put it forth. Uh, so his question was, can we execute multiple functions in a single execute block? No, it has to be a uh, one per uh, function. I mean, one per command. All right. Sure. I guess uh, so. Santosh is now. I hope you're clear about this. And uh, yes, also uh, thanks a lot, Arjun, for this wonderful session. It was great having you. And uh, I'd also like to thank all our viewers uh, who have. Uh, join us for this session this evening and uh, yes uh, i wish you all the very best uh, for the automaton india 2020 program and uh, like i had mentioned earlier so this particular webinar along with all the other webinars will be uploaded on uh, the activity page over skillenza platform and uh, if at all you guys uh, need to you know take a look at it once again you can go ahead and uh, take the videos as reference. And also apart from that, uh, the resources have been uploaded over Skillenza platform, which you can use at any point of time while you're working on the project. And uh, yes, like I mentioned, so we have our next meetup on 15th in Pune. So if any of you are in or around Pune, then please do register for the meetup as we have some amazing speakers uh, from automation anywhere and also an Azure specialist who will be coming off uh, for the meetup. And uh, thanks a lot once again, Arjun and uh, Vivek for joining us uh, this evening. It was a pleasure having you and uh, we look forward to see some amazing products being built during the Automathon India 2020 program.